Son into the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, our true high priest, make us worthy to commemorate the bishops and priests who have passed from this life. They cared for your flock, served at your altars, and celebrated your holy mysteries. May they share in the heavenly reward of the faithful bishops and priests that with them they may sing glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who chose priest and to the Son who entrusted the service of his holy mysteries to them and to the Holy Spirit who sanctified their offerings. To the good one be glory and honor on this day of their blessed commemoration and all the days of our lives and forever. Glory and thanks to you, O High Priest, our Lord Jesus Christ, for your priesthood is eternal. Today we remember our faithful bishops and priests who have finished their service and have departed from this world. How precious in your eyes is the death of your righteous ones. They carried you in their hands and they invited your faithful people to your banquet. They proclaimed your word and your gospel, and they diligently cared for your flock. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to receive them and to forgive them for any shortcomings in their service. As you honor them in this life, clothe them with the glory of your priesthood and with the robe of the righteous. In the sanctuary of your apostles, Peter and Paul, who faithfully served you, Count them among the children of light in the church of the firstborn. May they enjoy the graces of your holy mysteries as they celebrated. In the company of all the blessed apostles, bishops, and priests, with them they raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever.
our prayers and the fragrance of our incense, and may the priests who have celebrated your holy mysteries and have departed from us receive the reward of the good and faithful servant. In the abundance of your grace, forgive their sins, and remember on your heavenly altar all the good things that they once offered to you. May they share in the reward of all your saints, and with them may we raise glory and thanks to you forever. Amen. Kaddishat Aloha Kaddishat First letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. If you will give these instructions to brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teaching you have followed. Avoid profane and silly myths. Train yourself for devotion, for while physical training is of limited value, devotion is valuable in every respect, since it holds a promise of life, both for the present and for the future. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. For this we toil and struggle, struggle, because we have set our hope on the living God, who is the Savior of all, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one have contempt for your youth, but set an example for those who believe in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Until I arrive, attend to the reading, exhortation, and teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was conferred on you through the prophetic word with the imposition of hands of the Presbyterian. 
Be diligent in these matters, be absorbed in them, so that your progress may be evident to everyone. Attend to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in both tasks, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will close her priest with salvation, and her faithful shall ring out. Praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We join this sentence. Kyrie eleison. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the Living God. The Lord Jesus says, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master shall put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Amen, I say to you, he shall put him in charge of all his household. But if that servant says to himself, my master is long delayed in coming, and he begins then to beat the other servants and to eat and to drink and to get drunk, then that servant's master shall come on an unexpected day at an unknown hour and shall punish him severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful hypocrites. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations, nor act in accord with his will, shall be severely beaten. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but who acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much shall be required of the man entrusted with much and still more shall be demanded from the man entrusted with more. This is the truth, peace be with you. These things, proposing to the brethren, you shall be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine and teachings which you have followed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 
This is the first letter to St. Timothy. So now we've had back to back between yesterday's Feast of St. Marin and with the second letter to Timothy. And today, this first letter to Timothy on the commemoration of all the deceased priests. These are letters that are written at the end of St. Paul's life, as we mentioned yesterday. And so they are filled with the contemplations of an old man. Yes, I know that 67 is a spring chicken today, but he's probably in his late 60s. And even more clearly, we know with hindsight that he's only within a next year or so of his martyrdom. So this is a man now who has spent three decades, the period of time since our Lord's ascension, who's now in prison in Rome. And besides that also fundamentally, as we all do in those later years, we look over our lives. What have we done? What should we have done? What could we have done? What shouldn't we haven't done? And this different aspect, he's looking over the aspects of how grace has worked within his life and his apostolate. And he's writing to a young man who's probably in his mid-30s. And so in this epistle you have today, St. Paul says to Timothy, don't let them hold your youth in contempt. And St. Paul's concern, of course, is about the continuation of the gospel, the apostolate. So the first thing that we can ask ourselves today is, what does it mean to be entrusted with a treasure? Now, doubtless, many of us have probably, or at least some of us, have been executors for other people's wills at this point and have to clean up, distribute, store, pack away, and resolve whatever financial issues there are. But what about the treasures that are given to us, not just simply to close someone's estate, but when we're committed by family heirlooms and things that are given to us that have a great value to them? That's the first thing to consider. On a human level, that's what St. Paul's doing with Timothy. On the divine level, of course, it's the priesthood. It's this, it's this conveyance from generation to generation of men consecrated into the one priesthood of Christianity. There is only one eternal high priest. And all of these men for 20 centuries have allowed their lives to be completely transformed entirely and consecrated into that one priesthood. There have been hundreds of thousands of priests, perhaps even millions. But there's only one priest in Christianity. These men only have allowed their lives to be transformed and consecrated. And that's what we commemorate today because they give us that unbroken chain from the upper room, St. Marin being one of them. And that connection, St. Paul, of course, there, it's the very beginning of this chain. He's conferring this upon a young man who's in Ephesus to continue this work of the apostolic ministry. And so what St. Paul does here at the beginning of this epistle, he warns them about the fact of human beings' curiosity. They're always going to look for a different story. He calls them here silly myths. You know, tell us about the cosmic vibrations. Tell us about the boulder I can sit on in Sedona, Arizona to be in harmony with the, the universe. These are goofy. And yet we're surrounded by all of this stuff. We see it everywhere. I have to go have my chakras realigned. Or all these other things that St. Paul uses the image, he says they will have tingling ears. They want to hear new stuff. Tell us new things that God has entered into the world and died for us and rose in victory and triumph of the resurrection. Yeah, 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 I know that story. But give me something interesting. Tell me about the crystals. And St. Paul says, beware what has been given to you, Timothy. This scriptures, these, this doctrine, these teachings. And he says, proposing these things then to the brethren, to the church, you will be the good minister of Christ. It's not for you to invent something. It's for you to transfer a great treasure. That's all you're here for. 
And we all do that in the level of our own faith. For those who are married, it's the transference to your children. We've given them a life which will end in this world. They will die. Our, none of our children are going to be eternal. But we can give them a treasure that will last into eternity, which is the faith and grace. That will transcend death, not the life that we give them. And so what St. Paul is telling him is the necessity of the sound doctrine, the sound teaching, and this persevering action in order to retain it, to be vigilant, to direct, to correct, to inform, to teach, and to help. So there are three sections in this epistle as it's read today. The first is that necessity of the doctrine, the treasure that you have received, Timothy. Because this letter is written to one man, one individual. So the lessons that we draw from it are an application of what's written to a single individual. The second section in this epistle as read today is Timothy's example to set an example, to live according to this teaching. And that has always been impressed upon all of the priests, always in their formation. And when the priests do not live and set this example, the church is always in a catastrophic state. It has happened up and down and up and down periodically throughout 20 centuries. In the 11th century, St. Peter Damien wrote a whole book called the Book of Sodom and Gomorrah, in which in the 10 hundreds, he denounced what today we would call the Lavender Mafia, all the homosexual priests and bishops protecting one another, promoting one another, guarding one another, and he denounces this in the 11th century as disgraceful and sacrilegious. It's quite shocking. So the issues that we have with Cardinal McCarrick and the rest of these people, this, is not hap this has happened before. It doesn't excuse it. It doesn't make it any worse than it actually is. And it needs to be denounced publicly. For those of you who were here for the Feast of St. Mary, you got the sermon on Friday night. That was hell and brimstone. Okay, so. It was like a sermon from my old days from 20 years ago. We don't do that anymore, usually. But our Lord himself said to those who scandalize the little ones, it would be better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck and thrown into Saco Bay. And so, you know, until that happens. St. Peter Damien was a monk. He was also a cardinal. And when he wrote this, it was in the 10 hundreds. The reason why I give it to you as an example is for hope. Because the church reached her pinnacle of real glory on this earth in the 12 hundreds, 200 years after that despicable period of history. That despicable period of history of this lavender mafia and all of this was also connected with families fighting over whose young son was going to be Pope, literally waging wars in Rome, destroying the city to put, at one point, a 14-year-old on the papal throne. This is repulsive, and it should be an outrage to every Catholic knowing these histories. But these are things which took place two or three centuries as the church continued in fidelity and grew until it reached the great century of the 1200s, the 13th century, the century which founded universities. The church is the mother of the university system that you know, and the hospitals and the orphanages and all the things that we think of in a normal civilized society that comes from the church. It comes from the faith. But it comes 200 years after that despicable low period of what we call the seculum obscurum, the dark century. From the 900s and the 10 hundreds, it was pathetic. How we ever survived as a church, no idea, except that we know that we believe in the divinity of the church. That's why we say in the creed, we believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We profess in its divine reality, which is why today what we pray for are all the faithful priests who have passed away. 
Doubtless, there are many priests and bishops in hell. And always injustice, anyone who arrives in hell will always be injustice. And as I mentioned to you before, St. John Chrysostom considers that actually the majority of priests go to hell. Because what has been confided to them is so profound, so transcendent, so important and divine that the fidelity which they are meant to show to it by God's grace is certainly possible. And you've all known good priests throughout your lives. It is possible, which is why this last 40 year, 50 year period of our history of our church is so despicable. Because there's no reason why these individual men cannot have fulfilled their duties. Simply looking out for number one. And so St. Paul gives in this middle section of the letter today to Timothy the very primordial directive to the priests. Teach the sound doctrine, set the example in word, in charity, in faith, in chastity, and in action. Make it incarnate. Show what it is meant to look like. And then he says, and let no one despise your youth. It's okay, you'll be fine. Youth is always a remediable disease. It just takes time. And then the last section, in order that this is not about Timothy personally, and Timothy's going to end as a martyr. He's going to be beaten to death in the streets of Ephesus. Okay, so we know he finishes well. He certainly lives this reality. But the last aspect is because it's not about Timothy personally. It's not about Father so-and-so. It's not about Bishop so-and-so. It's about the reality of the eternal high priests. He says to Timothy in the last two lines of this epistle, last three lines, remember the grace of the priesthood, what has been given to you through the imposition of my hands, through the imposition of the hands of the presbyterate. It's verse 14. Do not neglect the grace that is yours, which was conferred upon you by the word of prophecy. Meditate upon these things, dwelling within them, wholly within these things. So to remember that what is confided to you is something much, much greater than you. And it's something that has been by the imposition of hands has been given to you by the transmission of this tradition Salvation obtained so that you may pass on in that generation that salvation to others. Families come and go. Families die out. But the priesthood has always been here. And on the day when our Lord appears in glory on the parousia at the last moment, there will be priests. There may not be many of them. There may not be many faithful Christians but they will be there and it will be a visible reality. That is what we commemorate as we go through this transition period of these three weeks of the dead. We begin by understanding the apostolic continuity throughout the church. And so that's why when St. Paul says to Timothy, meditate on these things, be holy within these things, that your prophet, what you've gained from it, may be made manifest to everyone else, that's applicable to all of us. We can't sit here other than, well, me, and think about the order of priesthood which has been conferred upon you, but we can all understand that by looking in this faith, meditating on this faith, dwelling within this faith, that the prophet that we have gained each personally from it can be made manifest. And when that is done, you will find conversions taking place because light draws. And when my life becomes lightsome, when it becomes luminous, it will draw other individuals toward the beauty of that light. And when that is done and each of us individually live according to this so that the profit that each of us personally have acquired by this faith is manifest to all, you will have no doubt about the future of this parish. And it will be here on the day of judgment because you will continually draw from the thousands of people who live in this area into the Maronite faith 
the Antiochian faith of St. Marin. But it requires each of us individually to understand the treasure that has been entrusted to us. It may not be the priesthood, but the faith has been given to us or else you wouldn't be here. And that is a gift which you can transmit in your own way, not with the same amplitude, obviously, as the priesthood does. But we each have this personal ability to do this in fidelity. And the, thing, the last thing that we want to remember is that spiritual goods are never diminished by sharing them. They actually become greater. That's why if you meet the one mother here or there that you come on occasionally these days who may have had more than 2.1 children, they'll tell you. Their love wasn't any less for that ninth child than it was for the first one who entered the world. Love doesn't diminish by being shared amongst more people. On the contrary, it increases and augments. And the spiritual treasure which is conferred upon us, the more that we can communicate that faith and that divine love and that charity to others, the more that it increases in our lives. St. James says in his letter, he says that the one who brings one to salvation covers a multitude of sins and saves his own soul. And so the question that I asked months ago to say, who are the two people in my life after decades of existence on this planet that I have brought towards the gospel of salvation? And if I can't name two, well... It's time for me to plunge more into this faith and this meditation so that the prophet becomes singular within my life so that it may be manifested to others. So there are two applications that we can take from this letter about the treasure which is entrusted to us and of course the spiritual good which I desire to increase in my own personal life because it's beautiful and the consolation of being able to bring others out of the darkness of this world to this light of the gospel, which I have believed in. And that's why you'll notice in the bulletin then, the epistle that you have written out, the very last line that St. Paul says to Timothy is to take heed of yourself and to these teachings. Pay attention, wake up. Take heed of yourself and be earnest in them, that this gospel is truly the center of my existence. It's the only thing that has the possibility of being beyond death. This body, my life, my house, my properties, whatever it may be, those all finish at death. The only thing that I can take beyond the veil of death is this faith. So St. Paul says to Timothy, take heed then of yourself and to this teaching. For in doing this, you shall save yourself and those who hear you. What a magnificent promise of the distribution of beauty, grace, and salvation and light. God himself knows how much the world needs it. So let us all individually put ourselves to work within that light and that doctrine to bring others to the beauty of this consolation of salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
true God, true God, begotten not in the name, the consolation of the Father, who made him all things for me, for us for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. He is the Son of God, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with the Lord to the house of living and the dead, and is seen in the world that I have heard. He will be the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who will be the Father and the Son, the Lord and the Lord of life, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Itelot madem heda loho, walot aloho da pare kayu, weilem silvot aylot of eulel baitof westude kayet lo, hot kohol Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord, God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Charbel, Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Amen.
on page 754, the Anaphora of Twelve Apostles, 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, o holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever amen O oh lord we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and body that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with your voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify, and proclaim. And holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son, became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary. And by his divine plan, he saved and redeemed us. Kyrie eleison. Wabiyamu haudukum harsho dilema bedchayeh. 
انصاب لحم و میدا کاری شد تو قبار خوقادش واکس ها یا برتر میدا کار و ماره صاب خول مهنه کل خوب اونو دنی تا فغرو دخلو فای کن و خلو ساگیه می تقسه و می تیهمه خلصایان حامه و حای در قلم علمین خن و الکوس و دمزیخ و من حمر و من مایو بارخ و کاره و یا بلتر می جا و کار و ماره دا بشتا و مهنه گل و خوب و نو دنی تا دمو دیل دی انتی کی خدا تو دخلو فای کون وخلف ساگیه میتن شر و میتی هم خلصویان حومه و حوی در قلم علمین Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We confess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O oh Lord, lover of all people, we remember your plan of salvation, and we ask you to have mercy on your worshippers, and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you when we ask you, have compassion on us, O God. Have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anite Modro Hochayo Kadisho. و نخن لاین وار کربن آهنو. The pious descent he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. The mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences, so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, 
Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Nasrallah Peter, our retired Patriarch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, <clears throat> dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them to lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. <coughs> Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Charbel. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf and have mercy on them in your kingdom. To our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. But the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
salvation, who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice, who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest, who offered yourself as the Lamb. For your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you, saying, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm, and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. Grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make, Make us worthy, O Lord, Lord God. God so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be the glory forever.
again and again. We thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to be in your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <clears throat>